Welcome to the McLaren 570S. So today is all about comparing the 570S with the McLaren 675LT. They're totally different brackets in terms of performance and price. But the thing is, this is known as McLaren's entry level sports car. And just by a quick depression of the throttle, you soon realize that this car is punching so far above its weight. It's, it's a joke how much power this thing has. It's incredibly capable, but the differences between these two cars, I guess are predominantly reflected in performance and price. The price difference, and I'm not talking about the um, list price of the LT, but the actual uh, market value now of an LT over a 570S. You might as well say they're another 200 grand which is a bit obscene um, and yet you get in this thing and a very well specced one at 170 grand i have questioned everything about all cars since i've got in this car because i think at 170 grand and that's pretty top spec i i, I honestly don't know what more you'd need the, the performance that this thing offers and don't forget we're sat in something that also has a carbon tub it's got carbon ceramic brakes it doesn't have the fancy um, hydraulically linked suspension that the LT has and it doesn't have as much um, active aero and when I say as much it doesn't have any active aero at all so no big wing flapping around but on the road I've been driving these two cars now back to back and while the initial hit and punch in the gut that is the LT is a absolute brain fragmenting experience. There's only so often that you can actually experience those, you know, well, that performance on the road. And I'm finding that even though the 570S is still quick, like obnoxiously so, it's it's still the kind of car that because it's down tuned, um, you can approach more of its capabilities, more of the time particularly with this car not being focused on downforce in fact if anything it's quite a playful car we're up in wales we are on the first of november the road surface is cold but the way this thing lets go is very predictable the other thing that i've noticed as well is jumping back to back between these two cars is the ease of access of just basically getting in the 570s is quite a lot easier than it is getting in the LT. And that would also apply to getting in a 650S or a 12C because they're both based on the Gen 1 carbon tub, which has a sort of box shaped frame here. Whereas on the 570S, the guys at McLaren have either listened to feedback or experienced it themselves. And they've decided to slope down where your feet access the body. And as a result, you don't so much have to step into it and slide over a, a big sill. You can get in this car much more like a conventional car. There isn't that big sill to overcome. And while we're on the topic of practicality, now the LT is probably a bad example because you need to approach the LT as McLaren's version of a Speciale. It's lighter weight, it's stripped out, road noise is louder, it's got the performance tires. It's designed to go fast and it was designed to shed weight. You get in this and straight away you've got a glove box, for example. I know that sounds like commonplace for any car, but the LT doesn't have a glove box. I don't know why. It's not like taking out the glove box saves that much weight, does it? For me, especially when I'm out filming, it's really nice to have a place to stick all of the cameras. But having said all these things, it's all well and good being in the 570S and singing its praises and comparing it from memory with the LT. But I reckon we take a jump in the LT and see what they're really like back to back.
So, I mean, this might, may or may not sound daft, but, hold on. Just approaching this thing, your mindset is that this is substantial. This is a thoroughbred supercar. And I still maintain that it bridges the gap between supercar and hypercar. I mean, it, it, it's hard to explain the intangibles, but just the feeling of this door, opening and closing this door, it just feels a more quality experience than the 570S. Uh, obviously, carbon panels on this. Yeah, it just feels a, like a, a very sort of qualified quality experience. So, I've obviously hopped out of the 570S immediately into the 675, and I just, there's something about this thing. It feels, God, and it sounds, you know, I spent a lot of time in this car, so sometimes you become a bit accustomed to how it sounds, just so, just listen, listen to this. <laughs> okay, the difference is the 570S is a very fast car, okay? The 675 LT is ballistic. It, it's, you should have another license for this thing. I, I, I maintain it. I, I still think that, say for example, you'd had no supercar experience and for whatever reason you were able to buy this as your first supercar, I believe it's dangerous. I honestly think it's crazy. It's just a mad, mad... <laughs> and listen to it, it's got... Beautiful pops and bangs and... There's something about this car, because if you were to read all of the items that they like upgraded and tweaked and improved on this, you'd go, yeah, you know, sounds cool. But it, 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 the experience, the, the connection that you get with the drive and the overall emotions that it gives back to you are greater than the sum of its parts. That's all I can say. Just when I shift on this, I have more connection with this car. I have more connection with the fact that it's changed gear than I do with the 570. 570 is very much of a sort of tone change. It just goes doo 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 and you don't really feel it as much. In this, there's a sort of crack about it, a slight whip crack on, on the upshifts that just sort of reaffirms that not only have you changed gear, but you've changed gear in something really cool. <laughs> it's funny, earlier I was saying how playful the 570 is. <laughs> this thing steps out on a whim. Oh, it's so good. God. Oh, and it sounds immense. And, you know, every time you anchor on and you see the, the active aero, the wing in the back just slamming up, it's, it's, a, it's an occasion. It's a full-on drama occasion. Oh, you hear that little pop there? It's so cool. It's so cool. For me, it's all about the way it stimulates your smile glands. If, if you get in it and you're beaming from ear to ear the moment you step out of it, great success, it's, it's job done. Now, when I get in this car, I am a more animated person for being in it because it, it tickles my fancy. You know, every upshift, every downshift, there's, there's drama in it. The 570, don't get me wrong, incredibly exciting car because it is ultimately a supercar. But I don't think it has the same drama that the LT brings. And I guess rightly so. Uh, the amount of pounds difference in these two cars is vast. You cannot ignore that. But I'm sure that one day, and I would imagine it's in the not too distant future, there'll probably be a 570 LT or something of that ilk. They're going to strip it out, they're going to do some entertainment engineering on that car and it is going to be at a price point that is hard to ignore. All right, so we have literally come to the end of the country, or at least at some part of the country. We've arrived 
on the coast in Aberystwyth in, in Wales. Felt it was the perfect point to end this day. We spent the whole day with the 570S and the McLaren 675LT. We've been driving them back to back. They're just so fantastic. The 570S, every time that I jumped out of the LT and back in the 570, I was like, there's no way it's gonna be anywhere near this thing. But every time it managed to pull something out of the bag, it's such a special car. And we have to remember as well, the price point this thing's at, it's 200 grand less than a 675 LT at current market value anyway. Ultimately, it depends on what's important to you out of a car. The LT is incredibly exclusive. I, I believe in the coupe version, there's probably only 40 or so in England. So, you know, that's, that's buying you the exclusive prospect. But from a driving point of view, I definitely struggle to say, here you go, cough up an extra 200 grand and you've got the LT. I don't know, it's mad. It's, I mean, the rate at which McLaren are evolving right now is scary. Anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao.